Hi, Jim Brandt with Best Practical here. Today, I'd like to experiment with some of the AI tools that are currently available out there and see if we might be able to use them to help us write some RT scripts. So what are scripts in RT? Uh, RT has a built-in automation engine and we call them scripts without the T. And each script is composed of a condition, the thing that determines whether it should run or not, and then an action, the actual thing that you want to do. And it's fairly simple at the top level. If the condition is true, you're going to run the action. If the condition is false, then we're going to skip the action. So RT uses this to send email uh, in really simple cases. So you can see uh, scripts in your system on correspond. So if there's a reply on a ticket, notify owner. So send an email to the owner. Uh, but you can do a bunch of other things with scripts as well. Uh, including automatically updating ticket information, for example. So here's an example that I've used in training before. Uh, on update from the big boss, set the priority on the ticket to high. Sounds very reasonable, but what if you're not a developer? Uh, many people get kind of stumped with the next steps to figure out how would I implement that uh, if I don't uh, know how to write code? Or maybe you don't know Perl because the Perl is the language used in RT, but maybe you know a little bit of coding in something else like JavaScript or Python or something. Well, with the AI models that are available now, we thought we'd give it a shot to see if they could help us sort of build one of these things. Now, a few notes uh, before you start using uh, some of the, one of the AI tools if you're new to it. Be careful with private information. Uh, a lot of the ones that are out and available, like uh, ChatGPT or the one that's available through Microsoft with Bing or the Google model available with uh, Bard, um, they are using all the information that people are putting into these to refine the models and as training. And some of them actually will give you a warning. I think it was the Google one that I experimented with that said, please don't include any personal information and it said that uh, humans would be looking through the information to uh, you know, help train the models and refine the system. So basically, if you don't want someone else reading the information, uh, don't put that information in. So you know, really personal details, company secrets, anything that's really private, you probably don't want to be putting into the public AI models right now. If you have access to one that is locked down and you know that it's safe to use, then obviously you could use it in that. AI models can be creative. Uh, you may have heard the term hallucination. Uh, they do come up with information that is actually does not exist in the world. So the examples that I've seen as I've played around with this are uh, method names that do not exist in RT. Uh, so it has the right idea and I've seen the AIs just sort of invent like this method should exist. Uh, so we'll see that as you go through our testing, obviously you need to test all of the, all of the output to confirm that it actually uh, will, will work and do the right thing in RT. Uh, the last note would be don't believe everything it generates. I've done a bunch of runs as I've been experimenting with this, and I've actually had a few cases where even the same uh, AI engine that I was playing with uh, actually forgot that RT could do certain things. So I'd had previous runs where it gave me code and I used it and it was all fine. And then I did a new session and I went through and because of the prompt that I generated, I asked it slightly different ways and it actually came back and said, you can't do that in RT and you could. So uh, don't believe everything it generates. And a lot of this comes down to what people are calling prompt engineering, which means getting your prompts right so that you can get the right uh, answers out of the AI. And we'll see some of that uh, as we go through. So we're just going to use that example that I have here and see if we can build uh, a script using the AI tool uh, for that update uh, from Big Boss set priority to high. So I've got a test uh, RT system right here. Uh, we've got it all set up with a, a, a new script that we're going to create. I just went to admin uh, scripts create. And that's going to give us our sort of open uh, new script that needs to be created. And then let's jump over to another window. And the example that I'm going to use today is actually using ChatGPT. So this is OpenAI's uh, AI model. So this is one that's been in the news a lot. And I've got a session that we'll go through. As I mentioned, I've been experimenting. Also, Bing uh, has a version uh, that's Microsoft's. And then uh, Google has a version with Bard as well. There are also some open source ones that you can find out there. Um, and you can try those out as well. I've been kind of trying different ones uh, just to see, and they all kind of do a little bit different things as far as the code they generate and the way they respond to the prompts. So let's take a look. 
When I say prompt, that's what this top section is up here. This was the prompt that I gave the AI. So first of all, I started off saying I want to write a new condition and action with request tracker. So I just have to give it some context to tell it what we are talking about. And that was enough for it to figure out that it was the request tracker ticketing software and to give it sort of that setup that I want to do a condition and an action. And then for this first section, I want to say we start with the condition. So I'm going to give it the rules for the condition. So the condition should be true. The person who created the ticket has the email address and then the, the sample email address that I have. And then I need to tell the AI what it is that I want it to do. So I've kind of set it this set this stuff up and then I just need to say write the code for this condition. I need to just tell it what I want it to do. So often they'll come back with uh, sort of a slightly reworded version of what you've given it. And this can help you if your prompt isn't quite right, because sometimes you'll see in the reworded section where the AI made an error sort of interpreting what it is that you want. So it can be helpful to read that top section and see sometimes if you didn't get what you wanted, it'll give you a clue as to how to rephrase to try to get a better answer. In this case, it actually did a pretty good job. Uh, it explains what I just explained, which RT has this cu uh, custom scripting language called RT scripts, and you can write custom condition for your needs. Uh, so you can see we get a little block here. It's got some nice formatting around that. And this is actually pretty good. Uh, this is valid code that will run in RT. Uh, so I could you know, take this right here. There's a copy code uh, link even, so you can just grab that. And you can see it's even commented the code, which is actually really nice. Uh, the way it puts extra detail in here. So this is really almost what I would do when I do a training class is I would go through and sort of uh, you give all of this information. So, so that's pretty good. But uh, as we go ahead a little bit, and then you can see it actually walks through step by step and explains the code, which is also really nice. If you're someone that's new to this, maybe you don't know Perl, uh, and maybe you know a little bit of Perl, you've done some other programming languages, you don't know all the methods in RT, it walks you through all of the reasoning behind what it built, which again, really nice if you're sort of learning things and just uh, getting started with writing code like this. Um, so I moved on from that one before we actually try this out. Um, and I say that the, the thing that was actually different on that, what I wanted to do in our example was to say any update from that particular user, from the big boss, not just the creator. So if I scroll back up a little bit, you'll see that what this is at, it's actually getting the requester on the ticket, right? And that's not actually what I need. That's not what we want. So this is another example of refining your prompt. Now, when you interact with uh, some of the AI models through interfaces like this, it actually keeps context. It's aware of this as being a conversation. So you can refer to previous things. It's each prompt that you give it isn't like brand new and, and fresh. So you can build on your prompt as you go. Uh, don't feel like you have to get that first prompt, like everything in there 100% right. It is a conversation back and forth. And that makes it really fun when you're experimenting because you can continue to refine as you go through. So that's what I did here. I said that example checks the requester, create a new version for me that instead checks the user who performed the transaction. So that clarification gets into a little bit of the vocabulary that we use just when we talk about RT. So when you look at RT, we look at a ticket, what do we call all those things in the history? So I know that we call those transactions and using that word is going to help ChatGPT get the right answer. So that's gonna be part of uh, using this tool is uh, sort of getting some of the vocabulary around RT consistent with what we refer to it in RT documentation, for example, so that when ChatGPT goes and looks, for the answers and the information that you want, it's going to sort of reference the right bits of documentation and sample code that it's using to build all of these answers. So it went back and it sort of rephrased a little bit and then it redid the code sample. And this is really good. This is exactly what it should be for the revised prompt that I gave it. So it's going to look at the transaction object, which every script gets, and it's gonna look at the creator object on that transaction. So, so this is really good. This is exactly code that I would show in uh, a, a training class uh, on this to, to solve this particular problem. So we can actually grab this. I'm just gonna copy that code and then we'll jump over here. And what I'm gonna do is we're gonna set up our new uh, script here. So we're gonna say, uh, on update, there we go, we got it right there. On update from big boss, set priority to high. So I got the name down, and we just need to make it actually work. Uh, and you can see I actually have some examples in here from our, from our trainings that we've done. But what you want is this uh, guy down here. You wanna say user defined, and you're just telling RT, I want you to use the code that I'm gonna drop in this box down here. And I'm just gonna paste in that code. Now, 
One of the things that we'll find out uh, if I went ahead and ran this is that this part actually is uh, a little bit confused from uh, the AI model. And the reason is, is there's two ways that you can create uh, conditions and actions. You can create them and put them in files and they actually live on the file system and they can be reused. And that's what all of the ones that come with your RT are written in. And then there's the other style that you can drop into uh, the interface here. And we'll see later, I actually have a prompt where I refined my prompt to actually try to help uh, chat GPT to understand this and give me a little bit better code. So for this one, I'm actually just going to fix that. But we'll see later how I actually was able to uh, update the prompt to uh, improve the, the chat GPT output. So um, yeah, so we got the comments up there that we dropped in, refined that a little bit, uh, and then we've got our condition. So let's jump back to our session here. And again, it described uh, all of the code that it wrote, which again, really nice. And so the next step is now I need the action. So please write the action that sets the priority of the ticket to high. So again, I have to explain to it exactly what it is that I want it to write. So it comes back again and has again a write up. And now we're in the action section. And this is exactly right. This method does exist. It is the correct one to call set priority because that's what we want to do. So again, commented code and it's actually correct. But again, we got this uh, myself equals shift part up at the top. So it goes through and it, and it explains. Um, so we'll address that in just a second. The next thing I wanted to do is I was thinking about, again, if you're sort of new to this, one of the things that I would show in a training class or that we recommend to people uh, when you're writing a, really any new script is to add a debug output. And RT has uh, methods that you can call to debug at various different levels. Uh, so what I said is I decided to ask uh, chat GPT to actually add that code for me. So I just said, add code to the action part to log when it runs and then when it runs successfully. And then I said, log both of these at the debug level. So RT has multiple different levels, debug, and it goes all the way up through uh, warning and then error ultimately. So you can you could put uh, debugs in there for if something bad happened to actually error and that will put something in the log. So I asked ChatGPT to do that for me. And again, it did a really good job. It found the methods that RT uses to um, call various types of log messages and it put in exactly what I asked for with all the different statements. So. Uh, again, really impressed with uh, how it was able to come up with um, accurate code that, that should run in RT. Uh, so last bit is just to address that uh, first statement that I mentioned where it's grabbing that, that self equals shift thing. Uh, again, I noticed that and I thought I, I should refine my prompt to tell it I'm doing this in the web UI, I'm not doing this in individual files. So I said, I want to create the action directly in the RT web UI as a user defined action update the code for me. And it did it. It's exactly what it did. It got rid of that initial uh, dollar self thing right at the top, which was the bit that if you had pasted that in, you actually would have gotten an error because it, it would have um, confused it. That's not appropriate for the uh, web interface part. So when it got to this part, that part is now good. We can jump over here. Um, in this case, so the action has two parts to it. We're just uh, building the commit code down here. We don't have any preparation. I could actually refine my prompt for that to say that I want uh, you to please build the action commit code versus the preparation code. So that would be something to improve uh, as we go forward. But for this bit, I'm just gonna have it always run. And then this is where we're going to drop uh, the new code that it provided. So we're gonna go ahead and create and oh you have to also select uh, user defined for that part and then we don't have a template for this because this is not sending any email so those are the last two just make sure all the code's still there all good so now we can create that so uh, that created uh, the script that we had uh, and if we look back um, that was all of the details uh, that we got. Again, it kind of described uh, a little bit as far as what it generated for us, which again is pretty cool. Um, so now that the script is created, uh, our next step is to test it. Uh, we'll see if it actually worked. So we'll go over here. This is a ticket that I already created. I'm logged in as the big boss, you can see up here. And we can see that the priority right now is low for this script. So we're gonna go in and just any transaction on this because I am the big boss can say, hey, what's going on with this ticket? 
And if we update the ticket, we can see priority is now high. So that is pretty cool. A quick session with uh, ChatGPT, and I was able to generate a script with functioning code that uh, actually updates the system and is now automated. You can see this is the transaction right here, priority change from low to high because I was the big boss. So um, if we go back to, these are all of the prompts uh, that I went through. We saw them all in the session uh, as we went through. Um, and some of the other engines that I played with actually even went a little bit further. They gave me the steps for where to find uh, the section in RT, where to add the script. So I went through that kind of quickly, but it goes admin and then go to scripts, create, so all the, all the bits that we saw there and it even reminded me to use the uh, user defined sections, which I forgot in that little bit there. So, so different engines definitely are giving me different responses as I went through. So I would recommend experimenting with diff different ones. So far in some of the, the work that I've done, uh, ChatGPT seems to give the best code examples, but then I think this set of instructions was from the, uh, the Bing uh, example. So it had enough knowledge of RT to tell me where it is that I needed to go find that. So each engine is sort of giving different information and different details uh, as we go through. So just a few tips uh, if you're going to experiment with this. Uh, as we showed in our example, you want to refine your prompts over time and as your, your setup prompt. And then even as you go through your conversation, as your prompts improve, the quality of your code sh should improve. And as we saw in the example, you can try to get it to fix the code examples as you go along. If it's doing something that doesn't seem quite right or you need it to change something or update, you can continue to go through prompts with that. You don't have to like start a whole new session every time. I would definitely re recommend using debug for testing. And as we saw, you can ask uh, the AI to add those debug statements for you. And if you give it even more detail, you could get into much more detail about what you want it to include in those debug statements. You could tell it to, you know, please output the values of certain variables, all sorts of things that you might want to know to help you with your debugging. Um, if you do get an error, uh, check the RT documentation to confirm things like method names. Again, it's one of the um, other sessions that I did. I was going through, uh, working through an example, and the, the AI that I was working with just invented methods uh, that uh, did not exist in RT. But if you go to the documentation, sometimes you can see kind of what it meant um, and actually find there might be an existing method that you can uh, actually use. Um, but yeah, there's definitely cases where um, you can come up with some uh, information that just sort of isn't correct or was, was kind of invented by the AI. So still in early days as far as that kind of uh, experimentation. But for examples like the one we saw today, uh, you can definitely get uh, a functioning uh, script and it just does so much to pull out all of that sort of baseline code, especially if you're coming into it new and this is all new to you. So we hope you give it a shot. Uh, if you have some uh, automation that you've always wanted to put in your RT, this gives you uh, a great chance to, to give it a try and uh, let us know how you make out.